Welcome to SWK's video series on Sage 100. This video is going to discuss the Common Information module in Sage 100. It's a module that is easy to ignore because that's up at the top of the list. It's right under Library Master, and it's not something that you would go into very often. We're going to discuss each of the menu items, starting with the main menu. You'll notice here that we have bank code maintenance, miscellaneous item maintenance, and memo manager. All of these things are found in other places in SAGE, but this is a nice place to find them quickly in case you don't remember which modules have, say, bank code maintenance. Remember, you could find that in accounts receivable, accounts payable, and bank reconciliation. Miscellaneous item maintenance you could find in accounts receivable, sales order, and purchase order. The memo manager you're going to see in most modules. And I don't know if you've taken, a taken time to look at what the memo manager is all about, but it allows you to assign certain attributes by role of how memos work for an individual that is assigned to the role. For example, we have check maintenance. Well, there's memos in there, and anyone with the, de uh, uh, with the role of default is going to be able to maintain, but I could limit that to be a show or that I would hide it and then the user would not be able to um, access the check maintenance memos. Also, the auto display features, we could turn those off for certain, uh, for certain users. If we come here into sales tax account maintenance, this is where you may have multiple um, tax codes and you would like them to go to different places in your general ledger. If you recall, under accounts receivable and accounts payable in division maintenance, there's only one account. That's the default. Fortunately, we can override them by tax code, and the only place that you could do that is common information. Reason codes. These are for uh, codes to assign when you inactivate a customer or a vendor. They both use a common table, but as you can see, uh, you have many choices to add as long of a list uh, as you want to understand why you have deactivated a customer or a vendor. It may be helpful for uh, reporting or looking to see uh, why you are no longer doing business with a particular company. Moving on to the reports, there's um, three reports here. One of them is the miscellaneous item maintenance. This is kind of a big clunky report. As you can see, you have a lot of options of what you're going to include, but when I go to preview it, I find that there's just too much information on here, oftentimes to make this particularly useful for me. But, of course, you can use the uh, designer to um, take away the information that isn't uh, important to you. That miscellaneous item um, listing is actually found anywhere you can do the miscellaneous item maintenance. At the bottom of, pan of the panel, there's a little printer icon that will launch this report. Here's another report on miscellaneous items that I think is easy to overlook but can be helpful. This is going to um, show you by trend a lot of information that is based on the miscellaneous items. Also on your asterisk items. So if you're using asterisk items over and over, you will be able to have a little bit of a insight just automatically without having to create your own report and you're going to get some trending information. As you can see from here, you have a lot of things that you can choose uh, to uh, sort this that might make this a uh, more useful report for you. We also have the miscellaneous item detail transaction report. This you can uh, run by period or by date, make your selections and also your years, and you could choose which types of items you're going to include, my charge, my miscellaneous, special. I'm going to leave them all on for now. 
Let's take a look at this. My uh, history isn't very large, so my report is quite small. But as you can see, it's showing me all the ins and outs, if you will, of the miscellaneous items. When you, this is the same type of report that you can have for inventory items, but as you know, it does not include these types of miscellaneous items. So here's a nice little report if you need to find where you are using perhaps this miscellaneous code called cables. Moving on down to the setup uh, menu, here's something that's important and you may have forgotten about. This is where I define my price, quantity, cost, and unit of measure conversion decimal precision. I can go up to four decimals for each item. As you can see, I can mix and match. But this controls how things are going to look in your distribution modules. You can also see here I have another important feature. By clicking this box, I would expand my inventory items from 15 characters to 30 characters. Just a little warning, once you enable this, you can't undo it. Fortunately, when you try to enable it, you do get a little warning uh, that reminds you that you can't undo it. Here I have years to retain um, item history. This is going to impact the reports that you see in the inventory module. We have commodity codes. Um, in later versions of Sage, in the inventory uh, master, there is now a field for a commodity code, and this is where you could set up your table. There is a nice handy uh, import, so if you wanted to import it, uh, basically you get some easy instructions here on what you need to do to be able to run this import. It's pretty simple. Your import file needs to have two columns, 12 characters for the commodity codes, and you have up to 60 characters for the description. And here is where you would be storing. You could direct it to where you are storing it and then just run the wizard and it will import your commodity codes. Unit of measure conversion maintenance. Uh, we have another video on, on this feature, but this is where you could set up some standard conversions. Let's move to utilities. We have a purge obsolete extended item descriptions. What happens in Sage, as you know, that after you have 30 characters on an item description, it enables another table that stores the extended description. Sometimes when you delete an item, that extended description sitting in that second file doesn't delete. With this little utility, you, you will clean up that file so that any orphaned records will be removed. Purging item history, this is if I want to uh, say in my case, maybe I want to uh, purge my item history on or before year 2015. Maybe my data files are too big and I want to minimize them. Uh, the uh, older data isn't helpful. I can keep my data files a little cleaner. And sometimes when you have um, reports that you're running, those reports can run a little faster if the files that it's working with is a little smaller. Recalculate item history. This is a big one. Every once in a while in Sage, we find that the quantities that you see month by month in inventory are incorrect. Running this utility goes back to the transaction files and recalculates all of those quantities. If you have a big data set, this could take a long time to run. So you just want to make, uh, approach this with a bit of caution before running this. Also, try this in a test company first. Uh, you may have some results that you are not happy with. As, and as is true for all utilities before running them, please make a good backup. We've already talked about the commodity code import. Take a look at some of these items in common information, particularly the common information options. Make sure it is set up the way that you need it for your Sage experience. Hope this helps you get more out of Sage 100. Thank you for watching.